Hi, Stan. Hey, Marine. How you doing? Do you want to introduce yourself for the people watching? My name is Stan Leona. I'm a British Nigerian contemporary painter working mainly in the medium of oil paint. My practice revolves around portraiture and the human figure, and I explore themes related to the human condition. So tell me a bit about how you got started as an artist. And I understand for you, it started quite young. As with so many other artists, started at a really young age. I also used to get my brothers and sisters involved. I used to gather them around the kitchen table and say, oh, we're going to do a drawing session right now. And we'd grab comic books or like little collector's cards of different cartoons. And we'd just spend a couple of hours just drawing away, we'd just like lose track of time and, and we'd do that. And then I went on in school, I studied art for GCSE. I also studied it for A-level. But after A-level, I got a little disillusioned with the whole curriculum and um, I ended up going to study business marketing. Then, yeah, later in life, like after a long hiatus, um, I came back to art in my early 30s. A few things were happening in my life that made me realize how short this life is and you really need to pursue, you know, where your interests lie and what your calling is. So, yeah, I just at that point thought to myself, OK, I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to get back into art. And that, that was the point that I started to take it more seriously. Yeah, I mean, as you say, a lot of artists have been drawing or painting or making in some shape or another forever. But many people also have a first career or a first degree in an adjacent field. So whether you've been to art school or not, whether being an artist is your first calling, but your second career, then there is a place for you and it can be done. When you started thinking, okay, I want to apply myself professionally, what steps did you take to start making it happen? Initially, because I hadn't been to art school, I really had no knowledge of the art world. And also I felt like my fundamentals needed some brushing up on. I scouted out for a local artist who sort of became like a mentor for me. And I used to go and see him like every week or so, every two weeks, and we'll have sessions where we do a little bit on the practical side, where he's teaching me some fundamentals and drawing and painting. And also like talking a little bit about the philosophy and approach to painting and mark making. We did that for at least a couple of years and then went off, carry on doing my own thing, mainly just exercises. Like I wasn't really making work to put out into the world. I was, I was practicing whether it was drawing from life painting from life um, I was just trying to really improve my fundamentals then it got to maybe another year or two after that when I thought I guess I had the confidence to start to put my work out into the world and that's when I started to look at avenues to do that I participated in the group show that was the first time I'd done a show put my work out in the world like that and it was great to just get the experience of putting on the show with other artists to get feedback, to understand how people react to your work, that was fantastic. And then at the end of the end of 2022, I started to work on my first series of paintings in plan for my first solo show. It was something that I really wanted to take seriously. And essentially, I wanted to transition to becoming a full time artist. I was looking at different platforms, different avenues that could help me do that. And I came across the Art Ladder. I initially signed up for the masterclass, which was like an introduction to what the mentoring program was going to offer. And I just wanted to get a feel for what you guys were all like. And I really enjoyed it. So I thought I'd sign up. I signed up initially with the plan to only um, start for three months and see how it goes. Three months went by and I thought, oh, this is pretty good. After six months, I thought, yeah, I think I'm probably going to stay on for the rest of the year. And then even now, as we're coming towards the end of the year, I started to contemplate whether I'm actually going to carry on into the following year. And I thought to myself, yeah, I think I will, because it's been super beneficial. So many different aspects, whether it was hearing the talks and lectures from either gallerists or collectors or the more seminar like programs you do where you break down things like looking at your CV, looking at your Instagram profile all those sort of things. Yeah, it's, it's hugely beneficial. It's been for me anyway. Thank you for that. Thank you for joining. And I think, as you say, we built the program so that it's a monthly program. From a curriculum point of view, every month builds on the other, but also 
we didn't want to ask artists for a huge upfront commitment or a huge upfront payment. As you say, there's a free masterclass that you can watch. It's an hour. We cover some burning questions that artists have. If you think that's good, then you can join on level one, level two, or level three of the art ladder and stick around, see what it's like. The huge majority of people do stay on, as you say, for a year and then go, is there more? Because there's more I want to learn. But there's also some people who say, hey, I've been with you six months or I've been with you a year. I've reached that step now. Thank you guys. See you later. I suppose it's all very flexible and dependent on where you are right now in your career and you can pick and choose as well what surgery sessions are right for you when we go into galleries and collectors and funding and social media and all of that so you were talking about developing a new body of work and working up to a solo show I think you're working with a gallery as well so where are you now any milestones that you want to tell us about to be honest, this year has been it's been phenomenal. It's it's definitely not what I expected. I remember the first surgery session, it was about goal setting and it was about setting like short term goals, medium goals, and long term goals. And with some of your long term goals, making them super ambitious, really reaching for the sky. And so I remember setting some goals and thinking to myself, I don't know if this is gonna happen, but let me set these goals because it's something to work towards. And yeah, the, the, the year has been really good. It started off probably with, I participated in like an open call to show some work at the Hampstead Affordable Art Fair. That was great. And I sold two paintings there, which was incredible. I also got selected for the RA Summer Show this year. Again, that was an amazing experience. That sold as well. Then uh, towards the latter part of this year, I put on my debut solo show at a venue in Dalston in East London, which was a great experience. It was fantastic. Again, I sold a few more pieces. And then just after that, I managed to secure some gallery representation with the gallery. And so far, it's been a great partnership. So it's been a phenomenal year. I just never would have expected it. To be honest, now I'm feeling like, how am I going to top this next year? (laughs) What am I going to (laughs) do? That's so good to hear. That's really amazing. Is there anything that you've learned that you've been able to apply this year? Yeah, I would say, first of all, applying to these open calls, like in, in, in a few of the sessions we talked about, don't feel shy about applying to open calls. And this is what was mentioned in, in the sessions. You should also look at the open calls just to make sure that it's in line with your work. You don't want to apply for something that's just not corresponding with what you do. And don't feel any way when you don't get selected. Like, it's not personal. There's so many factors that come into play. Also, galleries. Like I really found the talks when you hosted some gallery owners really helpful to get an idea of how they think about their gallery spaces, how they think about the artists that they bring on, just their general approach to running the business of a gallery because you know gallerists often get a bit demonized by artists and i think there is definitely a happy medium for both artists and galleries to work together you just need to both be clear on what you're trying to achieve and be transparent with each other and it can be it can be highly beneficial for both the artist and the gallerist so those are super super helpful as well other things like your Instagram profile, just not necessarily how to set that up. That's pretty straightforward, but you know, how to lay it out. Important for everybody. Some people struggle yeah, even with true, that it's bit. True. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and you cover that, which is great if, if people need that help as well. But also stuff like how, what information to include, the type of content to post for the kind of message or the kind of audience you're trying to appeal to. All these little things are super helpful. Again, things like your CV building up your artistic CV, what you should be doing to do that, what it should look like, formatting and things like that. All those things have been things I've learned from the art ladder and have been super beneficial. Wow, that's really good to hear. And yeah, you've clearly been coming to the sessions, listening and applying the advice, which is just so amazing to see what you've done this year. Okay, what's coming up then? Anything exciting? What's the future with your gallery or with new bodies of work or with new shows? You tell me. I'm currently working on my second solo series, 
I'm really in the thick of it at the moment. The plan is to have it finished by spring next year with plans to put on a show around spring next year. I've already had some brief discussions with my gallerist about it and he's more than happy to host my um, show there. So that's looking good. And I'm just going to try to maximize as many opportunities as I can next year. One thing I've learned is that it's great to have a plan and you should always have a plan because it's something to work towards, but things will always come along and you should just follow the current, follow the momentum of things. And one opportunity will often lead to another opportunity or one opportunity that didn't work out could lead to another opportunity. Um, I'm very much in that frame of mind and, and looking forward to what the year has to bring. Absolutely. I can't wait to see this new body of work and potentially your solo show with a new gallery. That is just so amazing to hear. Do you think there's any particular type of artist that might benefit from joining us on the art ladder? I'll be honest, I think it really will appeal to a range of artists. Mainly, if you are trying to become more professional in your practice, it's going to be hugely beneficial. There's just so many resources um, available to you to help you with that. Particularly, if you can, because I know it's, it's a little more expensive, if you can do the level three with the mentoring sessions, that is gold honestly like what you'll get in those sessions is incredible i think we we do one every roughly six months but what's great is it gives you an opportunity to build have something that you work towards to bring to the sessions and have a bunch of questions ready to go or have a, ho a whole bunch of stuff that you've been trying to work on have your mentor reflect on it and give you some feedback on it so that is hugely helpful but also if you're just maybe a hobbyist and you just want to get into the selling your work a little bit, you want to improve your marketing online, you want to maybe set up a little website, it'll benefit you. So I think it's like a range of different stages of um, an artist's career. The arts ladder can, can really be helpful. Mm. There's, there's just there's so many different things of, you, you offer up each month that there's definitely something in there for everyone, I'd say. And for anybody watching who isn't familiar yet, with the program. So you've got three different levels. Level one has interviews with art professionals, which we call our webinars. But basically we interview curators and collectors, gallery directors, critics, art advisors, a whole range. And then on level two, we have in-depth sessions about a particular topic, but about the business of being an artist. So funding, planning your year, organizing your own exhibitions, pricing your arts. That was a big yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a fan favorite. It's so then, hard. That's why it's so hard. Yeah. Everybody struggles with it. Yeah. And then on level three, you get two one-to-one -one sessions a year with us. So it can be with our co-founders, Penny or Emma, who talk about whatever you need, but usually your body of work, your plan, your strategy, the next steps in your professional development, or it can be with me about marketing and social media, website, Instagram, all that good stuff. Stan, let me know, people watching this video, where can they check your work out? Where can they follow you? Um, you can hit me up on my website, um, www.stanleyowner.com. Uh, or find me on Instagram, which is probably easier. You could just search Stanley Owner, which is O-N-A-H. Um, my actual username, whatever you call it, handle, I think that's the name, handle, is Stan .o. You can find me there. Thank you so much, Stan, for catching up and telling me about all the great things that you're going to be doing. All the great things that you did this year to start with, and then all the exhibitions and work coming up next year. Thank you, Maureen. This has been a great chat. And um, thank you for the year, to be honest, to you um, and the whole team. I hope we'll see each other soon on the art ladder. And until then, you take care. You too. Bye, Stan. Yeah.